artists have already represented around the globe. But you know what? To convey the message, you also need to have a critical mind and a sound mind. Exactly, and that's how the question and answer portion will help us distinguish who among our top 11 will be the ones to breathe the ever-surfacing phrase, beauty and brain. All right, so let's cut to the chase and get started with our second Q&A portion. Our first candidate is going to be number 21. So the mechanics for this is the candidates are going to choose one of the judges from the envelopes I have in my hand and then the judges will ask them their question. The ladies will have up to 45 seconds to answer. When they hear this sound, then that means their time is up. Are we ready? So starting with number 21, Paula, you look gorgeous tonight. Here's your mic on the left. Hello? It doesn't work. Uh, okay, there you, there go. you go. All right. You can choose your judge from here. Ah, here. Yeah. Okay. Should I open it? And your judge is? Yes. <laughs> she has uh, David Lacalco. So he will be asking your question tonight. Hi. Um, Candidate number... Good evening. 13? Uh, 21, I'm sorry. Okay, so my question for you is, um, how would you console the Filipino commuting public, especially those in Metro Manila? Uh, there's a silver lining toward traffic problems. Could you repeat, please? I cannot hear it properly, Paul. So how would you console the Filipino commuting public, especially those in Metro Manila? that there's a silver lining to our traffic problems. I, I cannot hear the question. I'm so sorry. Okay, I, I, okay, okay. It, there's a lot of echo. How would you console the Filipino commuting public, mm -hmm. especially those in Metro Manila, that there's a silver lining to our traffic problems? Oh, traffic problems. Now I got it. <laughs> So I think we should address our traffic problems by using more sustainable um, transportation. I think it's about time that Filipinos are aware of how the climate change is really present right now. COVID-19 really happened because of climate change. And we should start working all together to embrace our home because it's a... Um, if we do little things by using public transportation, by using uh, alternative um, energy, we are making a better place for our future. Thank you so much. Thank you, candidate number 21. You can take a stand. And calling on our next candidate, candidate number seven. Hello, Erica. You look gorgeous also. All Just like girls. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So you can choose your judge here. It's kind of hard to get out. Here you go. And your judge is Miss Winwin Marquez. Hi, Erica. Hi, Ms. Winwin. We have um, a really direct question for you. Do you think that we should decriminalize libel? Yes, I definitely think that we should decriminalize libel because especially in our day and age, we really don't know if that person is actually saying something true or not. And I think that, you know, we should start embracing press freedom, of course, and that, of course, includes libel because a threat to our press is, of course, a threat to our democracy. And how can we move forward if we do not embrace this? So, yes, definitely, I think everybody should have the right 
to and the freedom rather to say whatever they want but i think that it should be with responsibility and that i think we should decriminalize libel thank you Thank you so much, Erica, candidate number seven. So freedom of speech with responsibility. I like that. And calling on our next candidate, candidate number 25. Good evening, Gwen. Good evening, Katerina. And I hope you're doing well. You can go ahead and pick your judge. Miss Cleofe Albizo? Here's your question. How do we cope up from an education deficit accumulated due to the pandemic? As an advocate of education, I do agree that during the pandemic, we have suffered the most, but the children who have a lack of access to education have suffered the greatest. And working hands in hands with Erda Foundation, who empower the marginalized Filipino, I believe by uniting benefactors and encouraging our children and allowing them to go back to school, especially during this pandemic, will make this world a better place because education is the greatest weapon against poverty. Thank you. Thank you, candidate number 25. Education is the greatest weapon against poverty. As I told you, these ladies are so smart. Now we're calling on candidate number 24, Alison Black. Good evening, Alison. Good evening. I love your gown. Thank you so much. Um, so you can go ahead and choose your judge. Okay, so Allison has Cynthia Tomalia as her judge. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. My question is, if you were to be appointed as Secretary of the Department of Tourism, what innovation will you implement to boost cultural tourism? It would definitely be sustainable tourism. The Philippines is such a melting pot for different cultures, and we are the best tourist spot in the whole world. But because we are so popular, we are degrading the environment and we are losing the touch of our culture. So if we can promote sustainable tourism by avoiding over-tourism and making sure that each Filipino gets to explore each and every corner of the Philippines, then we can celebrate the Philippines while protecting it. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, candidate number 24. The Philippines is the world's best kept secret. And now calling on candidate number 20. Hi, Ashley. Hello, Miss Katerina. And hello, Mall of Asia Arena. You look very calm. And I'm sure you're going to do well on your next question. So you can go ahead and choose your judge. Thank you. Oh, it's her birthday. Happy birthday. And her judge is Miss Evangeline Pascual. What is your name, dear? Allison? Ashley. Oh, Ashley. How are you, Ashley? I'm doing amazing. Great. I can't feel my feet, but that's okay. Great. <laughs> Fabulous. Getting in touch with the self is great. My question is, uh, should bloggers and vloggers be accredited as members of the mainstream media? I didn't hear the question. Should bloggers and vloggers be accredited as members of mainstream 
Media. Mainstream, sorry, what was the last word? Media, media. Media. I do believe so because they are voices for the things that they care about, for other people, as well as those that they represent. Vloggers and vloggers do their best to provide people with information on all shapes, size, forms, forms and platforms. My mother personally herself is a blogger, and I know that she proudly advocates and shares all the things she's passionate about. Anyone can be well-educated on a subject if they are passionate and dedicated, and if people use credible sources, then absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley, and happy birthday again. Now let's call on our next candidate, candidate number 18. Hi, Justine. There's your microphone. All right, so you got this. Um, you can go ahead and pick your judge. Your judge is Sir JB Saliba. Hi, Justine. Hello. So, the question I have here for you is, what can we learn from celebrity breakups that expose their private lives to the public? Again, what can we learn from celebrity breakups that expose their private lives to the public? Thank you for that question. Good evening, everyone. We all have choices in this life, and to be a celebrity is someone to be of power. And to have power is someone who has authority, but it doesn't mean that they are not human. We should always respect people regardless of what they are going through because you never know what they are going through with the, their private lives. And I think if we do this, we'll definitely become more collected together and respected for one another. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. So, oh, here you go. Let's call on candidate number nine. Good evening, Kayla. There's your mic. Oh, thank you. And you can go ahead and choose your judge from here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Here. I chose the most difficult one here. Thank you. Your judge is Miss Jessa Hueller Simon. Good evening, Kayla. Good evening. Congratulations on making it to top 11. Thank you so much. My question is. What do you think is the most inconvenient truth about climate change? I believe the most inconvenient truth about climate change is that we continue to neglect it. We continue to deny that it is happening, and that is why scientists nowadays are continuously trying to voice out the problems about climate change. That is why we must continue to educate the public on what actually is happening around the world. And then we agitate those in power, those who are taking the lead, so that they may continue to continue to solve and create solutions for these problems so that we may transform our nation and finally solve this lifelong problem. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Kayla, so much. I love your answer. And let's call on our next candidate, candidate number 22, Cassandra. All right, Cassandra, you can go ahead and choose your judge. Thank you so much, Katerina. And I would just like to say you are so beautiful. Thank you, and you are gorgeous. Thank you. I'm wearing a Sir Leo Almodel creation, actually. Very, very beautiful. My judge is Miss Angelina Cruz. Good evening, Cassandra. Good evening, Miss Angelina. My question for you is, should the people within the LGBTQ plus community have the need to come out of the closet? Why or why not? 
With someone who has many friends in the LGBTQI plus community, I know their struggles because I've heard their stories. I respect that when they want to come out, it is their choice. I believe that as a straight cis woman, I should respect them and give them love and kindness. That is what the LGBTQI plus community needs, especially in this age. I want to empower them and embrace them with my love. And that's why I'm an exceptionally empowered Filipina. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Thank you so much. And calling on our next candidate. Candidate number 34. Hello, Beatrice. You may choose your judge. I have Miss Danlin Vera. Oh, she was in my interview. <laughs> Hello, candidate 24. Hi, Miss Danlin. Good evening. How's your night? <laughs> kind of nervous, but I'm so grateful that I have all of my family and friends here who came all the way from the provinces. <laughs> And actually, my mom isn't here to support me, so they really fill in the gap of my, you know, my mother being in the States right now. Okay, that's good. Here is my question. Do you agree that we should tax the rich even more to help the country rebound from the pandemic? Sorry. So, may you ask the question again, Ms. Danilin? Do you agree that we should tax the rich even more to help the country rebound from the pandemic? Definitely. I think, am I right, the rich? I think these are people who are on businesses, who have successful ones, and I think they should be taxed as high as they can to help the people who are in need, especially through the pandemic. I think it's really concerning for them, it should be concerning for them that they should contribute to the economy, to the people around them, instead of just focusing on their own businesses and their own pleasure and interest. And so with that, I think that they should be taxed higher so that they could help their fellow citizens. Thank you. Thank you, candidate number 34. Now calling on candidate number 13. Hello, Maria. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. It's an honor to be sharing the stage with a fellow philosophy major. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very excited for your answer, particularly, actually. So you can go ahead and choose your judge. All right. I wonder which one it's going to be. <laughs> okay, Ingrid. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I technically picked your question. Your judge, Maria, is Dr. Shanae Marie Vegafria Monar. Hello again, Doc. Hi, hi, Maria. So my question for you is, how is a bill seeking to grant a five-day mental wellness leave to workers essential for both employees and their employers? A mental health illness is just the same as any illness. As you mentioned in our mental health talk a few days ago, I think it's very important that as ambassadors of goodwill, as beauty queens, and perhaps as the next Miss World Philippines, we have to help spread awareness for the fact that mental illness is just like any illness and should be treated with just as much urgency. So yes, it is completely valid for us to now accept the fact that one can have a mental health leave. In fact, places all over the world have made room for more open and honest conversations about what it means to be more human. Like in Spain, for example, we now have a, a leave for women who are on their periods. It is high time that we recognize that we are only human and only then can we make a better world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. And let's call on our last candidate, candidate number 17.
Hello, Ingrid. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. I'm so happy to be here, Katya, and I'm really excited for this journey to finally come to an end, to finally meet the new queens, and just to be able to share a piece of my mind with the world. All right, so we have your final judge. Would you like to take the envelope <laughs> for sure. formality? And we have Mr. Harold Geronimo as your judge. Good evening, Ingrid. Good evening. We saved the best for last. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very timely question. How do you think can we unite as a people under one flag after a very divisive elections? To be able to unite as a people, we need to remember that we are working toward one common goal. And that common goal is to make our nation a better place, is to develop our nation, is to support our communities, and is to grow our culture and our heritage. No matter what our political beliefs are, no matter what our religion is, we should all remember to start with respect. We should respect each individual whether or not we agree with their sentiments, and then we can be able to learn how to be united, how to work towards a common goal, and how to create a better world. Thank you so much, Ingrid. Thank you. Thank you, judges. I'm so proud of all.